Hello and welcome to the latest Lucosa retro game review video. And for this one we have Rolling Thunder, uh, which uh, was, well the conversion was made by uh, Teartex, which is never a name that inspires confidence, <coughs> and uh, published, uh, or at least in the UK, by US Gold. Uh, this came out in 88, I think, either 87 or 88, and, uh, well, it's obviously a, a, a conversion of the, uh, arcade original. Um, now, well, let's just get a game underway and, uh, we'll show you what we're in store for. So, you play this sort of rather 60s looking, uh, secret agent. The idea is to basically infiltrate the base of this sort of almost like James Bond type supervillain and take out his uh, master hoodies. Now, the first thing that you've no doubt noticed is that uh, this thing scrolls at a fucking snail's pace. In fact, the whole thing uh, moves at a snail's pace. Guess what? Yep, I had this game back in the day and I spent 25 quid on this. Mm. So, the game crawls along and uh, you also have this uh, sample of music which is taken from the arcade original but uh, they only sampled a very short part of it so uh, although it is the music of the arcade original uh, it, it's so short that well it's almost to the point where it's barely worth putting in and the other thing that's well one of many things that uh, is missing compared to the arcade original is that uh, all of the hoodies uh, have the same colour scheme. Now in the arcade version you can tell which uh, uh, bad guys were which and how many shots they took to kill because of the colour of uh, their outfits. In this you've got no clue because um, well there, there aren't any colours so you, you can't tell. So some will come along and take just one hit and then another one will come along and takes two, another one will come along and takes three, and you've got no way of seeing which is which. So along with the snail's pace, the uh, inability to tell the difference between uh, one bad guy and another doesn't seem to have a lot going for it, but it does actually get worse. You'll notice in the uh, bottom right corner, there's a time limit. You have to get past each level within a certain time and that time limit is nowhere near long enough. The other thing is that the game has uh, very few uh, checkpoints. I've just reached the first one for this level. I'm also now doing this. This shows how bad the conversion is. If you try doing this on the arcade original, you are not going to last long. But uh, no, on here you can. But anyway, yeah, there are only, uh, there's only one um, like restart point in uh, the, the game at all. So I'm about to lose uh, a life because my time's run out even though I've not actually been hit by anybody which is just bullshit. Like to be fair the arcade original has that as well. Now like the arcade original this also if you are um, hit by a guard not if he shoots you but if he just uh, if you come into contact with him, it gives you a chance because uh, it only takes half of your life away. Um, and if the guard does come into contact with you, he'll punch you, or at least he does in the arcade version. In this, it looks like he's doing some kind of fucked up dance, and he just it just looks fucking shite like everything else about this fucking conversion. Um, I mean, I'm approaching the end of the level. You can see here where all these 
guards are congregating and uh, if I try to jump down there I think I will end up landing right on top of him and what I'm trying to do is okay I'm just about managed to get away with that now you saw he went to try and punch me there that actually made it look better than uh, it had it really does because uh, he didn't get to land a hit. There we have another guy standing in thin air. So I mean, as conversions go, I mean, it's just diabolical. It's it's one of these you know zero fucking effort. Uh, you know it, it's just it has a bare, you know, sort of resemblance to uh, the arcade original. We complete level one, so here we are into well, area two. Same music. In, in the arcade game it would change now, but no, not here. So, um... I think this way I'm going is a bit of a dead end. I, you have to start going up in this level. Okay, so let's uh, get on with the graphics then. The graphics are um, tolerable, but uh, well, they are right up to the moment when you then move. As soon as you walk and you see just how fucking shite uh, the, uh, the thing scrolls and how slow it animates, you just think, ugh. I and mean, this game is uh, a... It's an... Uh, not me, it's a Atari ST port. It's, this wasn't uh, you know, specifically done for the uh, Amiga. This is just porting the uh, ST version, which is nothing new. I look at the way it scrolls there when I jumped at the angle. I mean, it's it's not quite as bad as Karnoff, but it's not a million miles away from it. So we jump all the way up here. I think we're still going in the right direction. Yeah. Now we've got to time this right, otherwise, yeah, otherwise we were fucked. Right, now here we have the... Uh, having to go down the stairs and this is where you get some unbelievably bad scrolling that's what I was trying to do right so I mean, look at the way he just suddenly well you don't see him actually walk down the stairs he just jerkily moves down and oh it's just fucking horrible and it, there's just really not been any effort put into um, actually converting it well there was no effort put in done in converting the Atari ST version, so, which is what this is. So you have the sound of uh, one of them throwing bombs at nothing as I get through Area 2, so now we go on to Area 3. Now with Area 3 you start to finally get some new uh, enemies, it's not all these hoods. Uh, yeah, these things. Um, again, they are quite pathetic compared to how they're supposed to work. In the arcade version, they are extremely tough. And in order to jump up onto that uh, next level, you have to push fire and up, uh, which makes sense. And in order to jump down off of that level again, you have to push fire and up. Uh, that makes zero sense at all. You can also see that like the background graphics and on the floor and that, they are just fucking awful. There's no effort made again. Uh, you know, it's the story of the game. Zero effort. Uh, right. Graphically it's, let's say, things in some places can look okay but then that gets ruined the moment he, you know, any of the characters move because they move so fucking slowly and it's so jerkily uh, you know, animated and it's just fucking horrible. Um, then you get the sound. The sound effects are very bland. Uh, 
this, uh, you know, okay, they sampled some of the original arcade game music, but surely they could have sampled more than the same, you know, like five seconds over and over and fucking again. Now, here we have them there. That was them punching me, where they look like they're doing some weird sort of fucking dance. And that thing has jumped up and killed me, and I think that puts me, yep, back to the start of the level. So, um... Graphic of sound is done and gameplay. Well, you can see the game crawls along at a fucking snail's pace thanks to, uh, you know, the atrocious, uh, atrociously slow animation on the characters and the fucking slow and seriously jerky uh, scrolling. I mean, this is an Amiga for fuck's sake. It's capable of doing scrolling, you know, it's not exactly stretching its uh, capabilities, asking it to scroll, but, I mean, looking at this game, you would think, you know, well, clearly it's, you know, something the Amiga struggles to do. Now, this isn't a fucking Amstrad. So, uh, right, so, and then you have the unresponsive controls there, and I was pressing fire and it wasn't doing anything, so... It's... It's just, I mean, the Commodore 64 conversion of Rolling Thunder was no great shakes, but, um... And this is just, I mean, it... Amazingly, it looks visually a lot uh, better than the Commodore 64 version. But at least the Commodore 64 version has the ability to actually scroll. You know, it's not done like this and make the look like, you know, scrolling is beyond its capabilities. Um, again, I was pressing fire there and it wasn't doing anything. Now that thing there, see, is jumping up to try and attack me, but it can't jump over that... Uh, small obstacle that's in front of it. It's <laughs> just fucking laughable. Although, say, me buying, paying 24, yeah, 25 quid I'll pay for this fucking thing back in the day. And back to the fucking start of the level. And then on top of everything else that I've pointed out, it does my big pet hate with uh, any game, where it has this huge section at the top there taken up with telling us that it's rolling thunder. I know that! I bought it, I've loaded it, it's even got it written on the disc just in case I forgot. I don't then also need it written on the fucking screen every second I'm playing it. I don't need reminding of the game that, you know, I've bought, uh, you know, taken the, the disc out and fucking uh, loaded. I know what it is. You don't have to fucking tell me all the time, but no, it does. Uh, that is something that has, I've always hated it and I, I hate it even more now. So, uh, what do I score it? <laughs> uh, I, 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 it, well, it gets zero. Um, let's say it moves like shit, it sounds like shit, graphics are, for the most part, shit, and, um, it's just fucking absolute fucking cobblers. Oh, bikes off. Let you fuck that up. Oh well, what a shame, it's game over. Uh, so uh, that's, and then, yeah, when the, when the game ends, you, you, your game then automatically restarts again, uh, as if I really wanted to have another go. So um, that's Rolling Thunder. Uh, absolute fucking bollocks. Uh, uh, so to top it all off, there was no effort put in the Amiga version, this is just the ST version ported over. So, um, yeah, no redeeming features for this fucking thing at all, it's just complete, utter fucking shite. So that is Rolling Thunder for the Amiga, uh, 0 out of 10, and that brings this video to an end. 
and we will see you at the next one.